Hello, hello, crossroads, witches, and other interesting magical beings. And today is an extra special, and to those who think they may be, because that's what this video is about. Think you might be a witch, think you might be magical, think you might have an extra tingly spiritual connection going on. Well, I'm going to talk about some common. This is not all. This is not extensive. Nothing. This is one witch's opinion on signs you might be a witch or a magical person. And of course, I got notes, so let's see what the notes say. Uh, First one is strongly affected by the energies of their environment. That's a big one. You walk in a room, you can feel it. You are more sensitive than most. And I'm not saying to other folks, please. I'm just saying that you really have, it has a drastic effect on you. The energy of the environment really deeply affects you, all right? Number two, I think is fairly common, is waking up somewhere between 3 to 4 a.m., witching hour, magic hour, uh, what happens when you do, uh, time to say a prayer, do a meditation. Um, people that are doing this are more magically in tuned. You're naturally natural magical abilities are showing themselves. Uh, another one that a lot of us witches and other magical folk deal with is surreal dreams and nightmares. And these are vivid. These aren't, y'all know the difference between a, a surreal vivid moment and out of body experience versus just having a dream. And this is what it's about is that you do have these surreal dreams. You have these vivid m moments, memories, dreams, nightmares. And a lot of times we need to look at those as uh, messages uh, being sent to us. We're connecting uh, on an astral realm with an entity. Uh, could also be past lives showing you something. There are so many different reasons and it is, if you are having a lot of surreal vivid dreams and nightmares, definitely a rabbit hole worth going down. Ground shield, protect. It's always the thing. Um, the other one we have is we are strong empaths. You know, shit. Feelings, thoughts, you can pick up on feelings, you can pick up on thoughts. Sometimes it seems like you're predicting the future, but you're not really predicting the future. You just know the outcome. <laughs> and that's how confusing it gets. Uh, again, ground shield and protect. Uh, another one we know is naturally drawn to animals. A lot of witches and uh, interesting magical folks are naturally drawn to animals and vice versa. Animals are naturally drawn to you. Uh, it happens with both domesticated and wild animals. You have experiences that um, I'm not going to say normal because it's normal for us, but the mundane don't think it's normal. That's what I'll say about it. But you, they know uh, that you're a healer type, that know you're a safe place type, they know that your energy is welcomed into Mother Nature's realm. Or at least that's how I think about it. That's how I feel on it. All right. Um, another one that we attract is, I, I, I want to say weird folks, strange folks, strangers, um, people on the fringes, uh, also... Uh, a lot of uh, witches and magical folk are really good at talking to, and this is, again, I'm not slurring, like insane, schizophrenic, clinically mental people. We have the ability to sort of empathize with them, I guess. Um, they will reach out to us. 
Um, and that's because magic uh, at its highest is about being of service to other. We set our vibrations up for that. And so, of course, these people need a lot of healing. So it's no wonder they're attracted to us, you know. Um, and this is that aura of healing that you subconsciously, unconsciously have around you. And that's why people are approaching you and you're like, why is that guy talking to me? He's talking to you because he can sense you're special. And again, I hate you. I, like so many of the words I'm using, I'm like, I don't mean it like that, but I do mean it like that. Y'all know what I'm saying is all I'm going to say. All right. The other one is, ooh, we're really good at sensing weather changes. We can feel a storm coming. You know, magic's connected to nature. We're connected to nature, and so no wonder that we can feel it, we can pick up on it. You know, it's like that tingling in your bones. You just know. You can feel like a cloud in the sky, and you'll be like, mm, storm's coming, I can feel the tingle. You know, other times, you'll, you know, it's going to rain, it's going to rain, and you're like, nah, ain't nothing out there. You know? Uh, another thing that uh, 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 very common with witches and other magic folk is actually being able to smell negative energy. All right. Uh, and we are sort of, uh, whether, and once you start really working on it, it's even better as we're walking radars for energy. We pick up on energy. And one of the things, if there's a really ha -ha, negative energy, it actually affects our olfactory, our, 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 our senses. We actually smell negative, all right? And there's a whole, whole scientific rabbit hole. We can go down with this one. The question you have to ask yourself when you have this, it's bad negative, is what to heal versus what to avoid. Sometimes that negativity, there is a, a healing potential. Other times it's, uh, you just need to leave the room, all right? What to heal, what to avoid when you're in that situation, all right? Um, and another thing I think that a lot of witches, a lot of magical practitioners have issues, or I'm um, talking about issues, but one of the ways a sign that we deal with is overwhelmed. Really, for a year, we're constantly overwhelmed by the world coming in on us, all right? Not only through our, our typical five senses, but our six senses, and also in spiritual and astral planes, uh, and also absorbing other people's shit. I talk, you know, learning to absorb versus observe. Learn to observe other people's shit, not to absorb other people's shit. Don't touch the spoon. If it's stirring bad, you can't unstir it. All right. Um, we are also prone to giving too much and not recharging properly. It's because, again, at the heart, it's about being of service. But we need to remember to be of service to ourselves first so that we can be of service to others. All right. Um, ways that we can work with that overwhelming thing is really watching that negative self-talk, uh, negative thinking, and of course, negative actions, okay? Um, one of the ways to, you know, walk in the light, uh, no matter your path, is to have a strong moral compass and a strong ethical guide, and that will help you. And in a lot of these, you know, you're like, oh my God, I'm a witch, I'm a witch. Oh my God, I'm magical. Oh my gosh, I'm magical. Um, yes, you are, and you're not alone. There's a community of us, uh, all sorts of different flavors that you can get involved with. So I encourage you to reach out. I encourage you to do research uh, and all those wonderful things going with your eyes wide open. All right, just because it sounds like a good thing doesn't mean it is. So I hope this helps you with, I think I might be a witch. 
Uh, I think I might be magical. These are some of the things I'm dealing with. And knowing you're not alone, these are very normal, magical experiences. Get involved in the community. Get involved in an organization so that you can heighten your sensitivity, so that you, you can have tools that you can deal with these uh, situations. Like I said, my recommendation to anybody is always daily, two, three times a day. Ground, shield, protect. That will change so much of the energies around you. And with that said, get out there, fly those brooms, have a bright, blessed day. And as always, amen, blessed be, ashe, and a bobo.